I think we can all agree that the lecture before a midterm would not be complete without an environment diagram. So let's look at non-local assignment and what happens in environments when we have non-local statements. Here's a problem. It's based on a problem from a previous midterm, but it's actually new. So why don't you work on it yourself and then we'll go through the details together. Okay, so what's going to happen here is we'll define a function called OSCE. We'll bind the name OSCE to the function that we created, which has the intrinsic name OSCE and the formal parameter bear. Now remember, none of this gets executed until we call the function, which we do here. We call OSCE on abs. So abs is a function that's built in, computes the absolute value of a number. Okay, so we call OSCE, which means we introduce a new frame. Let's give it a reference number F1, a label. Its parent is the global frame because that's where OSCE was defined. So we just inherit the global frame from there. So we don't have any parent annotation, but we do bind the formal parameter bare to the argument that was passed in, which is the absolute value function. Built-in functions we write without describing their formal parameters because when we call a built-in function, we don't create a frame. So it doesn't really matter what its formal parameters are called or how it's implemented. Okay, what's next? Well, we're executing the body of the OSCE function, which defines another function, cal. So cal has a parent f1 because that's the frame in which it was defined. So we're in this current frame and we just defined a function so we have to write it down its parent, and its parent is the current frame. And cal is a function with this body, which we don't execute yet. And now we're down to this return statement, where we call cal on the argument two. So this is the cal function, we look it up. There it is, that's what we're gonna call. So let's just remember that this frame was created because we called cal two right here which means whatever is the return value of this frame will be the value of this expression, which is what will be returned from OSCE. Okay, so we're calling cal. We'll give that a label F2, and we'll remember to write down its parent. This is important because when we look up names in environments, we need to know the parent of every frame, so we know where to look for a name if we don't find it right away. So cal is this function which has a formal parameter burk, which we're going to bind it to the argument that we passed in. And why do we know that we're binding burk? Well, whatever function you're calling, you can always just look at the formal parameter along with the parent in order to fill in all of these parts. We could even look at the intrinsic name to figure out what to write right there. Okay, now what does cal do? Cal says non-local bear. What bear is it talking about? Well, there's only one bear. But we could find out if there were more bears, which bear we were looking for by looking first in the current frame and then looking in its parent until we find a bear. Okay, so we look in the parent frame, that's F1, and there's a bear. So any assignment statements to bear within the body of this function won't affect bear here because instead we'll do non-local assignment to where bear was already defined. Okay, so if bear burk is zero, well, what's bear? That's the absolute value function. What's burk? That's two. So the absolute value of two is two, which is not zero. So whatever is inside the suite of this conditional statement will never get executed. Instead, we'll go to this line, which says bear is lambda lay Berkeley. So a lambda expression creates a new function and that function's parent will be the current frame. So here I've created a lambda function with the parent F2 because that's the frame that we're in right now. So we just evaluated this lambda expression and we need to bind it to the name bear. And which bear do we bind it to? Well, since we declared bear non-local, we bind bear wherever it was already bound which is here, which means that this binding is gone and instead we bind to this new lambda function. 
So bear can only be bound to one thing in a frame. That's the rule of frames is that each name can only be bound to one thing. And so this old link is gone and we no longer have bear meaning absolute value. Instead, it's this lambda function. Now we evaluate this return statement, which means we need to evaluate that whole expression, which will evaluate to a tuple. And the elements of that tuple will be Burke, which is just two. And then whatever we get by evaluating cow Burke, which means that we need to look up its operand sub-expression and operator sub-expression. That gives us cow the function and Burke number two. And then this is a call expression, which means we're going to create a new frame for the cal function. So this is frame number three. It will turn out that we don't actually need this label, but it's okay if you write it in there anyway. And the cal function has one formal parameter, Burke, and a parent f1. Every time we call the same function, we'll have the same parent, even though we have a different frame. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the top. But it's really useful to remember why we call this thing in the first place because that's where we're going to have to go back to. Okay, so um, so we're calling cal, which means we bind the formal parameter to the argument, and then we execute this whole body, non-local bear again, which bear is bear. If bear burke is zero, now what does it mean to bear burke this time around? This time around, bear is bound to this lambda function. So in order to evaluate bear burke we're going to have to introduce another frame, which will allow us to call the lambda function, whose parent is f2, because that's what it says right here. Now the lambda function has a formal parameter lay, also written there, which will be bound to two. Why two? Because that's what Burke is bound to, and so that's what we're calling. So um, what does this lambda function do? Well, here's its body. It takes Burke minus Lee. What's Lee? It's two. And what's Burke? Well, it's not here. So we look at the parent. The parent is F2, and there's Burke 2. So Burke is 2. So the result is 2 minus 2 is 0. Return value is 0, which means that we evaluated this call expression. Its value is 0, and that's 0, which means we're actually going to return Burke plus 1, Burke minus 1 in this frame. So we create a tuple where the values are three and one, which is Burke plus one and Burke minus one. And now we've returned from this frame. And where does this value go? Well, the reason we created this frame was in order to evaluate this call expression. And this call expression gives us the second element in another tuple that starts with two. So we have a tuple that starts with two, that was Burke. And we went through all this work in order to evaluate its second element, and we got this tuple. Okay, so now we've returned from here, and we notice the whole reason why we called that in the first place was so that we could return cal2, which we now have. It's this tuple with a tuple inside it, 2 with 3, 1 as its second element. And so that returns here, and we're finally finished.